Hello everybody, welcome back to another War Thunder video, and in today's video we are going to be talking about if the A10A early is worth it in 2023. Let's dive into the specs of the A10A early. So looking at the spec sheet on the A10A early, we have a max speed of about 400 miles an hour at sea level, so that's a big benefit having it at sea level versus having it at, you know, 20,000 feet in the air. It actually has a really good turn time, but you got to account for the fact that it's slow, so it's not going to be able to like pull an insane amount of G's and make you pass out like crazy, uh, which is also a really big benefit is you won't really have the problem of blacking out in this thing. And then you also have a huge benefit of having it being a premium vehicle. You only have to pay 5,400 bucks per death, which is actually so insane. As you guys know, the higher up vehicles, they tend to cost quite pricey. Uh, but the A10 with premium keeps it at 5400 which is huge. One really key thing to look at, guys, is the maximum vehicle research efficiency, which is only rank 1 through 7. So you'll be able to cruise through ranks with this thing because it's just such a beast. Um, however, once you try to get to like the F16s, and I think the F14 now that it's down in rank 8, you're not going to have the efficiency to be there. So you're not going to be getting full potential, full RP on those bigger and more rp costing vehicles now another thing to look at just under the vehicle research efficiency is the rewards the rewards on this thing are insane now mind you i do have a uh, premium so i do get the extra 100 percent or whatever but if you do look obviously it's a premium so it comes with a talisman and the rewards for research are 701 percent research and the rewards for lions are 660 percent lions so if we take a look over at my service record I got about 800 battles in this thing. I love this thing to death. I use it both in air and ground RB. That's why it's so high. I love using this thing in ground. I use it almost every time I play a match in ground just because it's so fun to use in ground. Looking over to how much I've made with this thing, I've made about 15 million silver lines and about 1.7 million research, uh, which is huge. It's actually helped me get through quite a bit of the other side of the tech tree to get to the F-16s. Um, so it's really useful in that sense of climbing through the ranks just when you're already at the A-10 because I shot down to the A-10 late and then got the early. So if we look over at the secondary weapons, you guys can see that there is so much to work with. Not as much as other vehicles, but a lot to work with. It's great for using for bombing bases and even rocketing targets on the ground when you're playing Air RB if you really need to rocket targets. Uh, it has that ballistic rocket computer. And it also has the ballistic bomb computer, which is super nice to have in air realistic, uh, just so you're not dropping in the blind. To look at the kind of missiles this thing gets, it is packed with only two AIM-9Ls, which are amazing all aspect missiles. They have a three click lock range from the front and all aspect, and then they have about 11 click lock range from rear aspect. Now these things can only shoot from about three to four clicks um, in most aspects, unless you're up in high altitude, about 17,000 feet diving. Uh, I've done that and I've figured that diving, not really steep diving, but just kind of cruising at that height, gravity helps the missile. I've gotten to about six and a half clicks, um, but make sure they're going towards you. If they're after burning away from you, you're not going to hit anything. And just one thing to be mindful of, if you guys have never used an AIM-9L missile, please be careful on when you decide to shoot it. These things love nothing more than a teammate. AIM-9Ls hunt teammates they do not look for anything else they do not care for anything else you see an enemy you shoot at an enemy teammate fly by bye bye teammate that's how the aim 9l works it will love your teammate i mean granted teammates usually run in america a lot hotter than other jets but still just be really mindful of that you don't want to be losing 15 grand a game because of a sloppy missile so just be really mindful of when you're shooting missiles try not to be behind your teammate that's trying to shoot at someone as well and then shoot a missile and then it'll just go up and track your teammate Looking over at the main armaments, we have that beautiful gal that runs about 1100 rounds of ammo, which is an insane amount compared to anything else. But this thing is a ground pounder. It's not meant for air RB. Uh, it's not meant for the air at all, actually. We don't use this thing unless we have air superiority in real life. So it's not really meant for the fact that you're supposed to be shooting down other planes with it. So you're going to get racked up with the ammo. Uh, that's why this thing's amazing in ground, because you just never have to worry about going back to land to get more ammo. Another massive benefit to this thing, uh, stock, is the fact that you get about 500 flares. I think it's 480. Uh, between, if you want to switch that between shaft and flare, you have so many flares. You have plenty of time to just waste flares, dump flares, do anything you need with flares. And that has actually helped me so much in the past with, if I'm trying to get to a base or something and I just need to pop on my periodic flares, I can pop on my periodic flares and fly for a couple hundred feet. 
and then drop my bombs without having to worry about looking behind me and then spamming flares if someone's behind me, you know. Now mind you, you guys can make custom presets with this thing, which is what I would 100% recommend. Just make sure to keep an eye on the weight. You don't want to be running six 2,000 pound bombs all the time if you're bombing in air because you're slow enough as it is. You don't want to make yourself even slower. But I make most of my loadouts specifically designed for ground RB and not air RB because this thing, again, just performs like it should a lot better in ground RB when you're hitting tanks instead of planes. Now let's shoot over to the pros. So some pros for this thing is the money and RP maker. This thing can just demolish in RP and money making, especially when you got boosters on. I've had plenty of games where I've had boosters on and I've gotten 300,000, 200,000 SL. Another key factor for both ground and air is that it's such a stealth machine. This thing can stay low to the ground and be undetected all the time, especially if you're playing on those big EC maps. I've had plenty of times where I've been super low on the ground and they just fly right above me. I just pop up, shoot a missile and dive back down. And it's simple as that. And another great thing is that low, low repair cost of 5,400 SL. This thing comes in handy when it comes to dying and having to repair it, especially in ground RB when you're playing with a whole bunch of tanks and you have to repair all those tanks and then you only have to worry about a $5,400 repair cost with your high tier jet. And another main pro of this thing is the fact that it is a multi-game mode purpose vehicle. I love it in air, I love it in ground. Would I play it in air more? Probably not as much as I would in ground. So if you're looking to play air a lot more, I would not really recommend this thing. Although unless you wanted to bomb all the time, which is a really good way to make money. That's an amazing way to farm money in this thing. Uh, I would definitely recommend this more for ground than air because it's what the vehicle is meant to do. Now let's move over to some of the cons. One of the biggest cons in this thing and like the reason nobody likes it is because of how incredibly slow this thing is. Everything else besides it, like three other vehicles have afterburner and you're kind of just stuck down here going 300 miles an hour, just chilling, trying to catch up to the battlefield, hoping to God you don't get killed before you even reach your own bases because this thing is so slow. But that isn't always a downside. I mean, it's really easy to flank with this thing because of its stealth. But just be really mindful. If you like to go fast, I don't know if this is the one for you. Another huge con is with this most recent update, there are big maps. I've actually, for the most part, stopped playing Air RB with the A-10 just because of these big maps. Like, it's so hard to be able to do a whole lot with these huge, huge maps that they added. Um, I get it, obviously, for the jets. I like that they have the bigger maps when I'm in it uh afterburn jet but in the a10 it is more than a struggle to get even to the battlefield let alone trying to bomb or ground pound do your normal a10 activities you know it is so hard to be able to catch up to anything especially if your whole team goes out and dies you're just getting to your bases you're stuck with two aim 9ls and now that it's 16 v 16 you got eight other players versus just you so there's not a whole lot of hope you got there um, so I would just be really mindful of the big maps that they just added. It's definitely drew me away from playing the A-10 in air, which again, it's not even supposed to be playing in air just because of how the A-10 is built. And the last thing is be careful when you're building custom payloads. Um, this is the only really a con if you try to make your payload so aggressive. I usually only run two AIM-9Ls and then a couple of bombs depending on if I even want to bomb. But when you're building those heavier loadouts, again, you're going even slower than slow. And it also really affects the turning on this thing when you run a lot more bombs and a lot heavier payloads. Uh, just keep an eye on like your specs whenever you update a payload. Just make sure that it's doable. All right? Don't try to make it worse than it already is <laughs> with the speed and the turnability on this thing. The turnability is good, but don't make it hard. All right? the turning is key in this thing. Now with all that being said, is the A10A really worth it in 2023? My personal opinion is yes and no. If you're looking to play air, I really wouldn't recommend this thing now just because of how much the bigger maps have like screwed the A-10s over. Um, granted, you can still make a lot of money. I'm not saying you can't. I've had plenty of games where I've made over 100,000 Lions in, with the newer maps, but I would just be really mindful of that because it does take a lot longer to get to the battlefield. There's more players. It's just not that good. However, I would 110,000 million percent say that this thing is 100% worth it if you have a 9.7, 9.0 if you really want to push yourself to 10.0 or higher, or a 10.0 or anything higher than 10.0 lineup, this thing mercs in ground. There's a whole different play style to it in ground. If, if you guys want me to make a video on how to play this thing in ground, because there is a lot of like strategic ways to play this thing, different strategies, different ways, 
most successful ways, least successful ways, this, that, and another. If you guys want me to make a video on that, let me know. I will definitely do that for you guys. But for the most part, my opinion is this thing is way better in ground as it's intended to be. It's not meant for shooting down airplanes than it is in Air RB. However, that's my personal opinion. I think that it's up to you guys on whether or not you want to buy it. Again, if you're looking for air, would not really recommend it. It's really good for air. If you can play it right, it's really hard to play it now. Um, I never play it. I only play the late in Air RB now just because I get the four aim I knows. This thing is definitely in its prime on the ground, which is where it should be. And if you are looking to ground pound with it, this is definitely the vehicle for you.